Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to reconvene? Motion to reconvene. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, it's 9-15. And I have David Ridley, Susie Wright, Michael Peeler. Okay, David Ridley, 1311 South Beach Avenue, Beach Haven. Mayor Davis, members of the council, I stand before you here this evening as a trustee, a, a member of the Board of Trustees of the Beach Haven Marlin and Tuna Club. Beach Haven Marlin and Tuna Club is a recreational fishing club with over 300 active members founded in 1951. Our clubhouse, located at the end of Pennsylvania Avenue, was rebuilt in 2014 following Superstorm Sandy and has been in that location for 57 years. 49 of the Beach Haven and Marlin Tuna Club members identify Beach Haven as their primary residence. 57 of our members call Beach Haven a seasonal or second home. Therefore, 106 or 36% of our members are taxpayers in the borough of Beach Haven. Approximately 48 of the 135 slipholders of Morrison's are members of the Beach Haven Marlin and Tuna Club. As the immediately adjacent property to Morrison's Marina, we are arguably the most physically impacted property. Clearly, the future of the redevelopment has great bearing on us, the operations of our club. I stand before you here this evening on behalf of the board of the Beach Haven Marlin and Tuna Club in support of the redevelopment and in support of the designation of Chris Vernon as the redeveloper. Everybody knows that the fishing, boating, charter business, which is a separate entity, are all critical parts of the Southern Ocean County economy. At the Beach Haven Marlin and Tuna Club alone, we host a number of annual events for our members and three public tournaments, the LBI Cup, Flukamania, and the White Marlin Invitational. Each of those brings over 250 visitors to Beach Haven and to our club for these tournaments. And we believe that a reinvestment in the Mor Morrison's property will provide a welcome boost to the marina property, which in turn will further boost tourism, restaurants, retail, and have a positive effect on our club. It's not easy to stand up here and take a position to insert ourselves on the opposite side of much of the sentiment in this room. None of us like seeing a divided town. The Marlin and Tudor Club has members whose homes businesses are affected, some positively, some perhaps negatively, by any decisions made up here this evening. But I stand here tonight in front of you with the best interest of the club in mind. And we believe that the redeveloped waterfront is not only good for the club, but for Beach Haven. We're also concerned with the alternatives. I, I think that's something that's been addressed here a little bit tonight, but we all would like to see Morrison Soul. They've been nothing but incredible neighbors to the Marlin and Tuna Club for as long as we've existed. They've been great partners in all we do. And we're excited to see them move into the next phase of their lives and get out of this. <coughs> a developer will come along. It's a great piece of property. We think Chris Vernon is the developer that will most address our concerns and has. Uh, another developer could come in and fence off the property. They could build something as a right, which nobody likes, but it may be consistent with zoning, and then we really have no say. So I think that the use of a redevelopment agreement, which is what the borough is contemplating here this evening, affords the borough and affords everybody in this room the opportunity to say these things that the borough is taking into account, and these items are addressed through that. Over a year ago, when we received notice of the area of designation for redevelopment, uh, since that time, we've met with a number, uh, on a number of times uh, with Chris Vernon and raised concerns about our club's operations, parking, events, etc. And despite what I sense is an obvious, uh, obviously a significant amount of distrust of developers, I do want to convey to you on behalf of the Marlin and Tudor Club and our members that in each instance where we have raised uh, items of concern to us, he has addressed those. And I think as it was disclosed tonight, 
we have reached an agreement in principle with them. And, and that's incredibly responsive to our needs. Frankly, something that may not need to have been done. <laughs> we don't have parking. The Marlin and Tim Club has been in this great location, and because Morrison has been so gracious to us, we've been able to park there. But we do not have parking. So if Chris Vernon had not addressed these vis-a-vis the redevelopment agreement and in working with us, it's unsure what would happen in the Marlin and Tuna Club because we do not have any parking. So I encourage and support the decision to sign the redevelopment agreement and uh, thank you for your time. Charter Fishing Association. That's what I want to uh, talk about tonight. Uh, in, in looking at the, the drawings here, knowing they Morrison's property, and also stopping at the Hotel LBI to see how it was actually constructed, it's my belief that the existing fuel tanks will have to be removed in order to put up the supports for the building. So my, <clears throat> excuse me. My concern is the continuity of fuel availability to not only our charter boats, but all the other boats in Morrison's Marina during construction. Uh, it's been stated afterwards that fuel will be there. That's, that's great, but what happens during construction? Also access to the boats along the bulkhead. You're going to need lay down area along the side of the building for the construction. And that's also a concern I have of getting ourselves and our charter customers out to the boats. My third concern is, I believe Mr. Vernon said there's going to be a gate with a key card by the pool area to get out to that area of the marina. And I want to know how do we get our charters in and out of there at all hours of the day and night with the key card? Do we have to walk down there and let them in? Or is there, I think you're talking about golf carts, but I'm not sure how that would work out bringing the uh, charters out to the boats. And especially during the construction phase. So I would assume that's going to run over at least one full summer, possibly two. So there are there, areas that I do believe need to be addressed. Thank you very much. Lori Anderson. Colleen Lambert. Donna Doherty. Michael Rooney. Theodore Lambert. I'm going to uh, take the floor, uh, Sherry. I missed you, Michael. Yeah, I, I was waiting for my name to be called. Go ahead. I called it. Anyway, thank you. Uh, just from tonight, uh, Mr. Vernon said crushed she seashells, clamshells. Doesn't that become hard as a rock? And then it's so, therefore, it's impervious? No? Okay, those are me. Okay, uh, why would we approve this project if it lays at the feet of Capra first? Excuse me? Excuse me? The question is why would we uh, approve this project when it lays at the feet of Capra's approval? First. Can we can you answer that? Yes. Um, it, it is required to go and get local approval before CAFRA will uh, evaluate and um, assess it. Okay. Uh, last month they said they were going to be doing some architectural changes or something. I don't see any changes at all. Anyway. Will he be adding soil and compacting it so he 
can raise the height of the building. That will all be addressed at site plan. I cannot answer that. So far, we've only talked about the restaurant and the hotel parking. What about the staff for the restaurant and the staff for the hotel? There's another 20, 30 cars. Okay. Ah, I can hear myself talk. Okay. Uh, we are a resort. Someone said we're a resort. We are a resort town, and that's a, uh, that is a getaway town, to slow down town, to dream town, and if you're lucky enough to fall in love town. This is not Manhattan, and this project will uh, really saturate and congest the area, I feel. I believe it'll erode the delicate balance our small town has. As for gathering places, they're all over town. And I understand there have been a couple of traffic studies. I'm also wondering if there's been any EPA air quality studies done at the same time uh, and how uh, three, four, five hundred or more cars are going to affect the quality of our air. And I'd like to see, personally, one of Mr. Vernon's off-island buildings on the Morrison site. And I have, uh, I have not been in LBI Hotel, but I've driven around it several times and gone online and read reviews, and it looks wonderful. The best part about it is it's there. It's not here. <laughs> And thanks, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Theodore Lambert, 516 North Atlantic. Uh, Ms. Gibbons, I was going to ask you to please read the redevelopment plan. I do believe everybody in the public should be aware of what's in that plan, and, and since it hasn't been made public. The redevelopment plan? Mm -hmm. The agreement? The redevelopment agreement? I, I did review um, the, the salient points of the redevelopment agreement. It is not a public document until it is approved by mayor and council. Well, I must be on to something because the lawyer agreed with me. I, I'd like to an answer to Mr. Harvey's question. Is the phase one on environmental survey, what are the results of it? Uh, I'm sorry, what is that? Uh, Mr. Harvey asked a question that wasn't answered. A phase one environmental survey, has it been done and what are the results of it? That is not part of the redevelopment <coughs> agreement and which is what we're discussing this evening. Okay, could you answer Ms. Kona's question? Why, is, why, do, why do we not have 3D models of these structures? We have an architectural advisory committee that uh, is our experts in this field and they felt as though these renderings and the other information that they were provided with were sufficient for their review. I would just like to add that I'm sure if the public had seen a 3D model of the Victoria Rose development, every single person who's come into the store I work, whether they're locals, tourists, looks up at that and says, oh my God, you can't even see the sky. We're still under litigation. This project will be under litigation. Mr. Vernon says he's got a plan B. I mean, let's be honest here. I think it's all about the liquor license, the size of this hotel. We all want this property to be developed. We all want the property to be developed. We want the Enos family to be able to sell the property. We're so happy that he's buying it regardless. But Mr. Vernon could buy a liquor license and build a 40 room hotel that this site will hold. The days of the Baldwin Hotel, the Grand Hotels are over. So is the horse and buggies that brought people to the Baldwin Hotel. <laughs> and the train, yes. Thank you. Jim Lambert. 
Jim Lambert, 516 North Atlantic. Uh, is there a redevelopment plan available for review for this project? I think you're referring to the redevelopment agreement and the, until it is approved by mayor and council, it is not considered a public document and therefore it is not available for public review and comment. I was actually, the question is, is there a redevelopment plan available? Yes, there yet? is. Is that a public document? Can I get a copy? Yes, it has been a public document available for public review uh, since it was adopted. Thank you. Uh, second question, is there a list of variances that are required, that this site plan requires for the Beach Haven land use regs based on the plan that's on the stage tonight? I have not seen the site plan application. It's my understanding that there will not be variances that are required for this project. Because they're probably already granted the redevelopment plan, I'm sure. Uh, one of the principal purposes of zoning in the first place is to control density. Uh, the Beach Haven land use regs will require 7.8 acres of dry land for a 102 unit hotel. And all I can ask is that whatever gets built here strictly adheres to the Beach Haven land use regulations. Uh, lastly, there's many food and vibrant restaurants now in the area that really deserve a level playing field. And I suggest that the borough mandate a public parking garage be required on this site if parking remains a total joke like it is today, one year after the new hotel opens. Thank you. Tonight, Marion Redmond, Michael Rooney, Mary Kate Kelly. David Turner. Howard Burkle. David Turner, 121 Glendola Avenue. Uh, I'm, you know, I've spoken before on this project and I'm here again tonight to support the redevelopment proposal. I think many others, including Bob Stevens, Tony Cogan, Kitty Snyder, Beach Haven Marble Tuning Club, have articulated the reasons. I don't need to go through them why I think it's good for Beach Haven. But I'd add that we're fortunate to have this proposal in front of us. We're fortunate to have a developer who has a track record of building attractive and successful proposals or projects um, before us with this project. And all the all, look at all the alternatives that could turn out on this this property. So we are fortunate to have, and I urge you to approve this so that we can move forward with the project that's good for Beach Haven. Thank you. Howard Berkeley, 412 Jeffries. I'm know. sorry. What was the name? Howard Berkeley, 412 Jeffries. I'm confused. 400 people in a restaurant, 200 people on a deck, 137 slips, at least half of which is a summer home, which is in violation, as the individual said before, of a Beach Haven ordinance. And 20 parking spaces for the tuna club, nine for the captains of the boats, where their guests must stay. With this number of parking spaces, I think the concept is great. It's too big with too little parking. But the marina, the marina is going to be a transient marina. None of the boats are going to come out of the water because that's where the parking is going to be. So the boat operators are going to go someplace else. And he really doesn't want to have guys living on their boats because one, they take up parking, and two, they take up services. And transient people pay a lot more per day than someone would pay on a monthly or a seasonal basis. I think it's a great idea. It's just too big, too little parking. The family owns two pieces of property on the other side of the street from where this is. Are they included in the purchase of the marina? And if so, why is parking being placed there instead of in a small area? And I'm trying to figure out how do you get about 300 parking spaces with all the deductions to over 400 by using valley parking. Are they going to get smaller cars? It just doesn't make sense. This thing has to be, in my view, shelved. 
and get, get a traffic study, get an analysis of parking and how many parking spaces are really needed. A gentleman said before, we need a 12 month operation to help the businesses. There is nobody here. And every year there are less because everyone, like me, is out of here. You can't support a business as the restaurants close, the hotels, the others close, unless you have something. $59 rooms doesn't fill up Atlantic City. So give some thought to downsize. Yeah, the free liquor license is attractive, but if you have no one to serve the liquor to, what do you do? Postpone it, get common sense. Thank you. to the charter boat fishing group that's there. My uh, oldest son is part of it. I'm just curious for Mr. Vernon, what kind of dedication are you gonna offer for us people that own slips in that marina now and moving forward? Because um, I know you've bought other marinas, you know, off the island and on the island and have slowly raised slip prices there to try and make room for transient slips so that they can get a hotel and pay that way. So my question to you is, are you gonna allow us to stay on our boats in the summer and extend it in the spring and the fall, or will you do the same thing and try and price us out? Because you say you're a community guy and LBI, and you know Morrison's has been around for a while, and I would hate to see a developer kick out a lot of people that have been in those slits for 20, 30, 40 years and moving forward. So that is my only concern, is that we have a spot moving forward for uh, myself and my kids and generations in the future. Thank you. Melanie 
Melody Magaziner, um, Black Whale, Bird and Betty's, Parker's Garage. Um, I uh, never gets easy. Um, so I, I was. A lot of people told me that we were going to get answers tonight. Um, we were going to learn more about the project, and so far I've heard um, this will be addressed at the site plan, not a part of redevelopment. <laughs> Um, obviously, parking's a problem for me and my businesses. Yes, our success contributes to the parking problem on, in the marina, I'm sorry. Um, but nothing, this project doesn't impact anyone more than it impacts myself and our partners. And uh, it concerns us, the parking. And, I know people think I'm afraid of competition, but this will directly impact me. A 400 seat restaurant, a 200 seat rooftop deck. Will the pool bar be open to the public? Will the snack bar be open to the public? Where are the events going to take place? When are they gonna take place? Um, all, we've heard he has enough parking, but we still don't know how much parking he actually needs. Um, I've heard tonight that everyone's in favor of the redevelopment agreement. Um, I have yet to see it. Everyone in the room who's in favor of it, has anyone seen it? Um, it's not a public document, but like Keith David said, it could be. I think it's important to share with us, particularly the neighbors that are going to be impacted. Why would you vote on this without sharing it with us? It, is there anything in the redevelopment that addresses stormwater management? Because it should be in there. Why is there exemptions from impervious coverage? After this weekend's flooding, not an act of God, it just happens all the time. And if you lived here for 50, 60 years, year round, you would know that it happens quite often. Why would impervious coverage exemptions be available to anyone anymore? Council, would each of you mind telling me why you're in favor of this project? This room is equally divided. Everyone has a love for the Enos family. Mr. Vernon's a lovely developer. He wants to do well for the community. But why? Can you tell me, Mr. Maskell, why you want this project? I think that the hotel uh, is going to be a real attribute to the community. Um, I see the benefit to Marlin and Tuna, to the commercial fishing uh, association. And I think that there will be a very significant impact uh, on the taxes. Uh, the hotel tax and property tax, real estate taxes, uh, are going to add significantly to uh, the coffers of uh, the borough and That's a way that you can we can help to keep your taxes down as we continue to try and rebuild the infrastructure uh, and the storefronts. I remember during right after Sandy, there were an awful lot of stories in uh, the sandpaper and online uh, about what are you going to do to rebuild. Center of Beach Haven get commerce back and so we came up with this redevelopment uh, scheme and I think that it will prove if given a chance I think it's going to prove to be a benefit to uh, not only the taxpayers but uh, to the businesses restaurants uh, to the surf life. I'm strongly in favor, personally, of uh, following and passing the redevelopment agreement that is currently uh, looked to be voted on the scene.
So taxes are a huge part of your reasoning for this. Have you, have you thought about how it will affect infrastructure and what it will cost the town? Have you done any studies? Excuse me, Sherry. I, I think that this, this line of questioning is improper at this time. Um, it, it is not um, for um, council to, to be quizzed or um, asked questions. It's a comment period. And while I appreciate Ms. Magaziner's um, questions and concerns, um, they, they are questions, not comments, and this is a Well, because we don't here. know what's in the redevelopment agreement, and I'd like to understand why the council's all for it. And they will give their, um, their statements, uh, I believe, when they are voting. Okay. All right, so I guess my last, I, I've heard a lot tonight again about the love for the Enos family and the developer and why should we should trust this developer. Again, as someone who is going to be more impacted than anyone really in the community, I have to look at the track record. And he is affecting surrounding businesses in Chipbottom. And there is a current lawsuit. And it's going to affect us. And you need to take us into consideration as you move forward in this vote tonight. Thank you. Genevieve Cunningham, Nancy Papino, Bill Marino. Genevieve Cunningham, 127 Fifth Street, Beach Haven. Um, a lot of my questions other people have already asked, but one of them, um, we had terrible flooding last weekend, and it just happened. We had the Nor'easter and it, it was crazy. So I'm just wondering, you know, you say you have enough parking. What happens if we have a day like that? And you, you have a full hotel and you have all this parking underneath the hotel. What do you do with those cars? Where do they go? Who gets them out? Are you, you're gonna have LA people there getting all these cars out of there? Do they just sit there? That's, I'm just curious about that. I know you're not, you're not gonna answer. Um, I also have a question about the trash pickup and the deliveries that are gonna go to this hotel. Um, it's a hotel, it's a restaurant, it's a bar, it's a pool area. How do you have the deliveries of these huge trucks all day long? Are they going to be restricted? Are you going to allow, like, what happens on 2nd Street right now where those trucks just sit there, they block the traffic? What's going to happen in that little turnaround over there at the um, bay? Um, I know, again, you're not going to answer. Um, uh, I guess that's it. My other questions were already asked and unanswered. Thank you. Bill Marino, 501 Dock Road. Um, a lot of things have been covered here tonight. I don't want to reiterate and go over, you know, the lack of a parking study, um, you know, the um, you know, lack of really any kind of traffic studies to really, you know, document what's, you know, what's going to happen with the, you know, enormous amount of people that are going to be here on Dock Road. But I guess the piece that really it just really irks me is the whole lack of concentration on stormwater management. Um, I bring uh, our Exhibit A um, against the wall over here. Everyone's welcome to look at it on their way out. It's an aerial shot that uh, one of our neighbors took of uh, Dock Road in Pennsylvania from uh, this past weekend. And I, I just can't imagine how additional density is going to help this situation um, along Dock Road. Um, yeah, it's it's really bad now. Um, how could it get any better? And then the lack of just you know knowledge and due diligence on this matter from both the developer and the town, and kind of leaving it up to CAFTRA is just uh, it's just irresponsible in my opinion. Um, so that's really all. Thank you. Hello, uh, good evening. My name is Nancy Lupino, and I live at 223 Second Street. 
uh, right in back of the chair. Um, I moved to Beach Haven because I love this small town deal. And um, slowly, slipping away, I, I would, I, I am very pained tonight because I feel that there's an animosity between the residents of Beach Haven, the full-time residents, and the people on council. You were elected by the full-time residents, but why is this animosity? I think the residents would feel better about these projects if there was more transparency, there were more um, questions answered, there was more for us to see how we're going to be, how we are going to be affected. Um, I just hope, my fervent hope, is that when you vote tonight, that you really consider the lives of the full-time residents and how they, are, how we are going to be impacted. The residents of Engleside and Center Street and Dark Road, Second, Third, Fourth, and Fifth Street, in the hub of the of the town. Please consider us, and please consider how our lives are going to be affected when you vote. Thank you. Scott Cunningham, Chris Rutherford, Karen O'Keefe. Hey, I'm Chris Rutherford. I live at 444 Center Street. Um, I just have some questions, and a lot of that can't be answered here, I know. Um, my main question is, can you describe the projected effect of anticipated traffic on all bordering streets? I live on Center Street, catty corner from the Black Whale. I have witnessed multiple times people running red light or running the stoplight, or stop sign, <laughs> thank you, and um, almost coming into multiple accidents. I have seen large amounts of traffic in and out of that area um, over this past summer. I have two children, and I live in an area where there are multiple children that ride their bikes and walk to school. And so what I'm saying tonight is what I'd like to know is why a traffic study, which you can't talk about tonight, isn't being considered before you make a decision um, because it will impact kids that are driving to school in the morning, coming home when you have a large um, hotel like this in the area that's going to have people coming in and out and aren't paying attention because they just want to get to their vacation. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. I'm uh, at 429 2nd uh, Street. I'm actually a house away from the Lot C parking uh, that's on that map. So I believe there's a lot of people who've come up tonight that say, I'm going to be impacted more than everyone else. I think there's a lot of people in the room who feel that they're going to be impacted pretty significantly. Um, the one thing I would say is that I think it feels like everybody here is supportive of the family and making sure that they're able to develop and be able to sell the property. Um, so that, that seems like something people can put to the side. Also, I don't think anybody can disagree with the fact that Chris Vernon does a lovely job, right? His flowers are pretty, his, his um, you know, his choice of seating is lovely in his hotels and all the rest of it. So it's not a matter of quality. Really, I think the question for those of us who are within a, call it, you know, mile radius, but certainly those of us who are closer, is a matter of magnitude. If you look at that rendering that's up there and this, the space where the hotel and the restaurant and everything sits in blue, it's like there's nothing around it. There's there's no there's no space on the outside of it. It is going to completely consume that whole area on Second Street. And I would I would second the the notion that the woman who shared, if you saw that in a 3D rendering, you'd be more shocked by it, right? On a flat plane like that, you can't tell 
what this is going to do to the community. I mean, I, I know for myself, I'm actually not somebody who grew up here like many of you. I'm fine. I actually think it would be nice to have it develop something um, good in the area. But I know for myself that I've watched from my porch while you know people are trying to park at at Black Whale and Parkers and everywhere else in the neighborhood and taking up that the parking on the street is crazy to begin with. Never mind the, the, the delivery trucks coming up and down constantly. The thought of having you know people being shuttled up and down Second Street to the beach that you can't even get a spot in as it is. So when you talk about this, it feels like it's an all or nothing proposition. It's 102 rooms with a 200 you know person uh, deck space on the roof and a 400 person event space or we're all afraid of what the alternative is. That seems like the wrong way to think about it. This is just too extreme for the location and for the scale of what is already in that neighborhood and I would encourage all of you to think about the fact that so many of us have been uncomfortable listening here tonight with just sort of blank stares on many of your faces and the thought that you're not with a lot of comfort and confidence that this is being done in the right order. Thank you. That is my list. If I've missed anyone, you can come to the microphone, state your name and address. Can we just be added if yes. we didn't sign up? Yes. Go right up to the microphone, state your name and address. Hi, I'm Nancy Thornton. I live on West Avenue, and I'm shocked by myself that I'm up here talking to you. But I implore you, we elected you. Please represent us, not the business. My husband and I, my husband and I retired here. No longer can we get off the island on the weekends, so we just ride our bikes around and as long as we're in good health, we'll keep riding bikes, I guess. But the traffic is just horrendous. Please look at that and think about that. It's not just, oh, your taxes are going to go down. That's crap. It's not, they're not going to go down. You're going to have to spend more money, hire more policemen do a lot of other things that are going to cost us even more money. So please don't ruin our town. And I also think you're opening up a Pandora's box by allowing a 44 foot high building. So what is going to stop all the other hotels from saying, it's time for us to renovate. Let's go on up and become Ocean City. He could very easily condo that place out and make it into Shelter Arbor. Anybody else want to speak? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the issues that has not been raised by anybody here is that uh, oh, dead Whitcrab. Um, 528 Dock Road, very, very close to where this will be built, and I'm very supportive of it. Uh, this would be the only hotel, uh, bar, restaurant, facility that would be fully handicap accessible. The only one in the whole island, whole of each Haven anyway. I, I bring in White, my mother, other handicapped people. I take them out, I take them shopping. I take them to happy hours. All the places that they love to go, businesses whose expansion I've supported, the Black Whale, Tucker's, Parker's, all of these, I've, I've supported these businesses in their expanded 
um, facilities, in spite of the fact that they are severely lacking in parking, for which Mr. Vernon is somehow supposed to be punished for their lack of sufficient parking. And yet this facility will be the only place that I will be able to take my handicapped people like Ann White, like my mother and other people too, that is fully handicapped accessible because there are no others in all of Beach Haven. And this is a resort community. <laughs> people who complain about parking and, and you know, move to Chatsworth. If you don't want to live at the seashore, you have 10 weeks of hell. It's the price you pay for living in paradise. It's a resort. And I'm totally in favor of this. I think it'll be beautiful. Would anybody else like to speak before I close the floor? Yes, I, I have one question uh, that I don't think anyone asked tonight and I forgot before, which is what is the occupancy for each hotel room? We've heard about the restaurant, we've heard about the rooftop deck and the boat slips and the marina, but we haven't heard a word about, unless I missed it, about the occupancy for each hotel room. Does anybody know the answer to that question? Because that, that speaks to parking and the number of people that will be in the area and everything else. Does anybody have the answer? No, I don't. I would like an answer to that question as well. I'm assuming 102 room hotel, at least 200 people, but I've never had a definite answer to that. I well, know. I know just from speaking to people about hotel LBI, there are some rooms that sleep six people. Um, some rooms, I guess, that sleep two people. We have no idea what the occupancy will be, so how can you really judge um, what numbers you need for parking when you don't have a number for the occupancy of the hotel? Anybody else like to speak? No? So I close the floor to public comment. Do I have a motion to approve? Like a, yep, yep. Like a motion to approve resolution 222. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Can I uh, get a motion to recess? I have a couple of questions. You have a motion to recess for a few minutes? Certainly. Is there a second to that? Second. 